I guess this will be another controversial video. Just like last time, I dared to openly criticize the way Valve operates. Here is the too long didn't watch. Contrary to what some believe, Valve isn't a small indie studio. It is a huge company with plentiful resources and, therefore, has no good excuse for neglecting TF2. For those of you who want to know the specifics of that take, hear me out. I'm making this video as a follow-up to my last rant about Valve, in which I call out Valve's negligence towards the TF2 community and how the community ecosystem could be wiped out by this company in a snap. I was quite surprised by the reach that video got here on YouTube, especially considering how small my channel is, and it made me particularly glad that a lot of people understood my concerns and seemed to agree with it or at least understand where I was coming from with that rant. However, I got some comments that really baffled me. Some people seem to be under the impression that it is unfair to criticize Valve's lack of care for TF2, because, on their minds, Valve isn't this huge company, and also it isn't some AAA company that can throw money at a problem to fix it. That kind of defensive statement about Valve is pretty common online. I see comments like those all the time on places like Reddit, Twitter, and on the Steam community. The thing is, they are not based on the reality of the facts, and the people stating these things are mistaken in this regard. It is true that Valve's beginnings were humble. The company was founded in 1996 by two former Microsoft employees, Gabe Newell and Mike Harrington. They certainly fought an uphill battle to establish Valve as a profitable company, and in that process, released to the market plenty of innovations, most notably the immensely influential Half-Life and Portal franchises, multiple online games such as Counter-Strike, Team Fortress, Left 4 Dead and Dota 2, revolutionary hardware like the Index, and what has become the main platform for digital game distribution on PC, Steam itself. There is quite a list of accomplishments and few companies can rival what Valve alone was able to offer us throughout its history. And it is exactly because of that success that Valve is such a giant nowadays. Bloomberg estimates the company to be worth $10 billion in March of 2019. That puts Valve in the same weight category as huge gaming companies like Activision Blizzard, EA and Ubisoft at least in terms of market value. And Valve's revenue is no joke either. It is estimated they earn $4.3 billion in 2017 through Steam game sales. Just think about it, 4.3 billion US dollars in revenue through game sales alone, possibly without counting what they earn from in-game microtransactions or from the Steam community market. I say possibly because it is very hard to estimate how much Valve actually makes from the community market and microtransactions. That makes me very comfortable guessing their earnings are actually a lot more than that, especially considering how Steam became even more of a dominant platform in the last years. That plentiful source of resources puts Valve in a very stable position. Steam is almost a passive source of income for them. Of course, they have to invest time and resources to keep their sales platform functional for customers and developers, but that doesn't come with all the hassle of developing and supporting their own games. Basically, they don't have to be a game dev company anymore if they don't feel like it, and we've seen that come to fruition in the recent past. Valve had a very productive run with their Orange Box games, followed by a hiatus that lasted years broken only by Artifact, Underlords, and Half-Life Alyx. And bear in mind, those are all games that didn't really make Valve much profit, especially Half-Life Alyx, which I imagine cost a lot to produce because of the new VR tech needed for the game. And we have reports suggesting Valve knew that and wasn't really worried about profiting from those products, 
Valve knew the audience for Half-Life Alyx would be relatively small and they weren't really worried about profiting from selling the Valve Index VR headset. That pretty much confirms that Valve is a company with enough resources to just spend money and development time into whatever they find interesting. While most companies invest on projects that will return profits, Valve invests on projects that tickle the company's fancy. Even Tyler McVicker, former Valve News Network, stated something similar to this not so long ago on one of his streams. Oh, if any other game company was given the player numbers of Team Fortress 2, you would have weekly updates. Valve is the worst company to have a game like Team Fortress 2 in their possession. Period. Period. It just is. It just is. And... Unfortunately, you need community organizations to take over things, but the community themselves hates community organizations nine times out of ten. I mean, they can't even really keep up to date with Dota 2 or CSGO. They're just not a... Look, they're not a good company, guys. They're not. They're, they're awful at what they do nine times out of ten. They just are. And I feel like we can all agree on that now. I feel like we're all in agreement that Valve has sparks of absolute geniusness just absolute brilliance and then lots and lots of just dropping the ball and valve i i'm you know i know enough about valve to be able to say that they're like well just wait until you see what we're doing just wait till you see what we're working on and they always tell themselves that and like 90 percent of the shit that they're working on gets canceled and then that is more important than keeping up to date the things that they charge people money for day to day other than steam because it's literally the infinite money fountain that allows them to be terrible people <laughs> that is both a blessing and a curse because while it allows valve to further pursue innovation and new technologies it puts their other products in a dire position tf2 has been most affected by it after all, if what you primarily seek is to innovate and to be at the vanguard of the industry, what is there to do in such an old game? But it's becoming more and more common to find CSGO and even Dota 2 players complaining that Valve doesn't care that much for them anymore. Even Steam, Valve's main source of revenue, has become mostly stagnant in its development compared to how fast it received new features in its early years. Basically, as long as Steam continues to generate that much revenue, Valve doesn't really have to care much about their product offerings. And that shows how Valve is, indeed, a huge AAA company that has the money to throw at whatever they want. Now, some people are going to point out that Valve's internal structure is fluid and that the company doesn't have a traditional hierarchy and stuff like that. But that's really besides the point. No one is forcing Valve to operate the way it does. If the company directors, or whoever it is that pulls the strings at Valve, wanted, they could change that modus operandi at any time. Valve works like it does because the company wants to do so. If they neglect their products, it isn't because they don't have the resources, it is because they don't have a real incentive to appease their customers. In the end, it boils down to this. Valve has all it needs to keep working on Team Fortress 2 and its other games. But the company doesn't feel like doing that because as long as Steam keeps printing them money, they don't have a need for it. Simply put, Yes, Valve is a huge AAA company. Yes, Valve could throw money at its problems until they are fixed. No, Valve doesn't want to do that. And you know, I'm very disheartened by that, just as anyone would be. But what really triggers me is how Valve won't even allow other companies or even the community to take charge of the projects they don't want to keep up to date anymore. And none of those options are new to Valve, actually. Remember Pastime, the game mode that got officially in TF2 during Meteor Match and that no one asked for? 
it wasn't fully developed by Valve, it was co-developed by other companies, Bad Robot and Escalation Studios. Imagine if Valve would contract third parties again to work on their games, but on features that people are actually requesting. Crazy idea, isn't it? Or even allow the community to update the game like it happened on Left 4 Dead 2 with the last stand update. Do you know what game has a lot more regular active players than Left 4 Dead 2 and would really appreciate Valve's cooperation like that? If you guessed TF2, then you've hit the nail on the head. The takeaway from this video is this. Valve is an immensely profitable company. Valve has all the resources to do, be it directly in-house, through third-party work or through community cooperation, what we need from them. So, please, I beg of you, stop acting like Valve is a small independent studio and face the reality that this corporation doesn't want to care for the game with so much love.